friends, today we talk about a super awesome bridge, Beipanjiang Bridge. It's not just any bridge, it's the tallest bridge in the world. Imagine standing at 565 meters in the air, look down, wow, just like in the clouds. How high is this bridge? Almost as high as a 200-story building. Even the Empire State Building of the United States looks shorter standing next to it. Seriously, anyone who sees this bridge for the first time will be shocked beyond words. It's like a giant dragon spanning over a canyon, it's spectacular. But yeah, you guys don't think it was built so high just for looks. In fact, the terrain here is particularly difficult. It's called karst land, and the ground is full of cracks, so it's not easy to build a bridge over it. The clever Chinese engineers came up with a brilliant idea, since the ground is not easy to build on, they built the bridge high up over all the difficulties. Using only 224 diagonal cables, they lifted the bridge, which weighed tens of thousands of tons, into midair. Isn't that awesome? Speaking of awesome, did you guys know? China has 8 of the 10 tallest bridges in the world. It's not bragging, it's a real skill. But then, there's a new news recently. China is going to build an even taller bridge. It's called the Huajiang Canyon Bridge, and when it's finished, it will be 60 meters taller than the Beipanjiang Bridge, so it's like building a bridge to the sky. The new bridge is expected to be completed in 2025, and will surely surprise the world again. I have to say, China is really strong in building bridges, simply the world's first. So the next time you hear someone say that China's bridges are amazing, be sure to proudly say, yes, that's the pride of China. I wish I had the chance to see these super bridges with my own eyes, it would be a great feeling.
Okay, let me introduce you to the construction of the Beipanjiang Bridge, a thrilling engineering marvel. First of all, I have to tell you that building this bridge was no easy task. Imagine, it spans between two mountains, with a bottomless canyon below, and surrounded by the kind of karst terrain that is full of rocks and cracks, it is really difficult. The engineers had a lot on their minds before the work began. They spent years surveying the terrain and designing a plan. Finally, they decided on a suspension bridge design, which would allow them to span a greater distance and avoid all the trouble on the ground. Next came the piling stage. Don't underestimate this, piling in a place like this is like dancing on the tip of a knife. Workers have to operate huge machines on the edge of cliffs, and the slightest mishap can be life-threatening. Sometimes when they come across particularly hard rocks, it takes days to drive a single pile. Once the piles are finished, it's time to build the main tower. The main tower of Beipanjiang Bridge is 269 meters high, equivalent to a small skyscraper. The workers are like ants, building upward little by little high in the air. Every day, they have to wear special safety suits and helmets, so they really can't be sloppy at all. The most exciting part is to build the main cable. Imagine having to pull two huge steel cables from one mountain to another, with hundreds of meters of suspension in between. This job scared the workers a lot, but they managed to complete the task despite the pressure. Finally, the bridge deck was laid. The workers were like playing with high-flying blocks, fitting the huge bridge deck panels precisely into place. Throughout the process, they had to be careful for fear of making a mistake. During the years of building the bridge, the workers had to suffer a lot. They had to face the hot sun in summer and the cold wind in winter, and sometimes they had to deal with sudden rainstorms. But that's how they built the world's tallest bridge, one step at a time. In 2016, the Beipanjiang Bridge was finally open to traffic. The moment the first car drove across the bridge, all the people involved in the construction were so excited that they burst into tears. This is not only a bridge, but also a testimony to the wisdom and courage of Chinese engineers.
Hey friends, do you know why your state has built so many bridges? This is very interesting, let me tell you about it. First of all, the terrain in Guizhou is very complicated. There are mountains, canyons, and rivers everywhere. You can't drive anywhere without a bridge. Therefore, building bridges is as important to Guizhou as eating and drinking water. Besides, Guizhou was famously poor in the past. Why poor? It is because of the transportation inconvenience. Think about it, things can't be shipped out, and the good things outside can't be shipped in, so economic development can't be slow? Therefore, the leaders of Guizhou are determined to build bridges and roads to connect Guizhou with the rest of the country. Moreover, the geological structure of Guizhou is particularly complex, which is professionally called karst landscape. It is not easy to build bridges in this kind of place, and it will collapse and landslide if you are not careful. But it's precisely because it's difficult that the Chinese engineers showed their skills. They have built one bridge after another in this kind of place, and every one of them is world class. You may not know, Guizhou built these bridges not only to facilitate travel, but also become a local tourist attraction. For example, the Beipanjiang Bridge, how many people specifically run to see it, by the way, can also drive the local economic development, two birds with one stone ah. What's more, the construction of these bridges is also accumulating experience for the whole country and the world. Think about it, if you can build a bridge in such a difficult place, won't it be easier in other places? This is contributing to the improvement of China's bridge construction level. Finally, the construction of so many bridges also reflects the importance the state attaches to the development of Guizhou. The country has invested so much money to help western regions like Guizhou catch up with development and narrow the gap with the eastern regions, 